Good morning, everyone, on this second day of the Zero Project Conference. I'm very happy to kick it off with a fireside chat with Greg van der Hayden. I'm Sabine Lubnik from the Mobile and Wireless Forum. But Greg will talk to us today about AT on Demand. But before you jump into that, Greg, just a very quick question. How did you get pulled into the AT field? How did you start off? Uh, I was tricked. It was uh, 52 years ago now. And uh, <clears throat> I was tricked into going out to a school to meet a young boy who uh, couldn't speak or write or type or do any kind of communication. And uh, <clears throat> it was actually the first time I had met somebody with a disability. It was very different in those days. Uh, and I was taken by the spirit of the young, young lad and um, gave up my job and got a bunch of other students together and we began working and it all grew from there. All right, well, so I'll invite everybody to check it out and to come find Greg afterwards. I won't go into his biography because otherwise we would eat up all the time we have. And what we really want to focus on is the AT on demand. So assistive technology on demand, what is it? What can we picture ourselves under this expression? <clears throat> Imagine that you, are, um, you need assistive technologies, but you don't have your own computer. Um, you don't own one isn't given to you, you can't afford one. You can't use the AT. Um, you need it to use the computer. You can't use the computer. You don't have one, and nobody will let you install your AT on their computer. You can go to the library, and you can't install it there. You go to school, and all your classmates have all these computers provided in the labs or whatever, and you can't use them. You go to the community center. Wherever it is that your other peers can go, you can't. Now, imagine the ability to be able to go to any of those computers that your peers can, any computer in the classroom, any computer in any classroom, in any school, and you sit down and your AT shows up on that computer and configured exactly the way you needed to have it configured. And then when you get up, it all disappears. And that's what AT on demand is. What kind of AT are we talking about here? Uh, any AT that runs on a computer, if it's uh, something that requires something physical, you know, like a, if you had to have a special camera or a special sensor, um, you could bring it along, plug it into the computer, and then AT on demand can bring all the software and drivers and everything down. Uh, we haven't figured out how to transport physical objects over the internet, or else we wouldn't have to worry about funding anymore. <coughs> the, uh, but. Um, the, the way it works is you sit down at a computer, um, and it can be a computer at school or at a clinician or a teacher. Someone sets up a computer the way it needs to be set up for you. And then um, you have what's called Morphic. It's a little free utility. And AT on demand is also free. Um, the AT can be either free or not, depending upon if you're using free AT. But the AT on demand and the Morphic are all free. So you can put it on all the computers. Um, you sit down to a computer that has that. You set it up the way you need to have it, or if somebody sets it up for you. And then you save it, and it goes to the cloud into a secure, encrypted place where only you use it. Um, and then anytime you sit down to a computer and sign in, it brings that down, sees what you need, gets the AT, puts it on there, sets it up for you, and then when you leave, it disappears. So how is it different from the accessibility features that are already built into the device? Well, <coughs> Morphic, the free program I talked to, first of all, if there's AT in the, in the computer, Morphic makes it a lot easier to find them and use them. So it already does that, and you don't have to have any AT on demand for that. But if what you need isn't, what's in the computer isn't good enough for what you need, you need more than what's in the computer, then the AT on demand comes in. So Morphic, a, makes all the stuff built in really easy to get and use. And then uh, it, if what you need isn't there, it brings it in and puts it on the machine for you. So what would be one of the examples that is an AT that is not included in the accessibility features <coughs> and that um, Morphic would then provide for me? Well, there's, uh, I'll do two. Uh, one is a very common one, um, like a screen reader. Like somebody wants to have JAWS and they need the power of JAWS and so the built-in uh, software isn't, isn't good enough for them. Or that's the one they were trained on, someone they know. And saying, well, there's another screen reader on there is kind of like saying, um, well, if you're a, a Mac user uh, or that, uh, oh, that's okay, you don't need your Mac. I have a Windows computer. And it does the same thing. And you go, 
yeah, but I don't know how to use it. Or better yet, I have a Linux computer. You can do everything on Linux that you can do on your computer. And you go, I have no idea how to use Linux. So um, the person sits down. And of course, they can't use the computer until they get the AT. So it, it, it would bring it down for them. Uh, <clears throat> somebody with a cognitive language and learning disability who needs prompts. And that's a huge population. And there's a few features built in. but nothing like what the individuals need. And without it, they're not going to be able to get an education. They're not going to be able to compete. They can, quote, go to school for 12 years, but that's not what they need. They need to get the education as good as everybody else. They've got to go compete. And so they need to have a computer that's set up, if you will, with the glasses. It would be like not having their AT is like telling somebody with really low vision they don't need their glasses. Um, just go through school, just, you know, if you're a little slower doing things, that's okay. Um, you have low vision, we expect that. You know, it's like not good enough. You need to give them the tools so they can compete. Okay, so now I understood how it works. Yeah. And you mentioned Morphic is free, AT on Demand is free. So why isn't it everywhere? Um, <coughs> two things. One is that uh, no one has done it before. And uh, another one is that for it to work, it's got to be on all the computers. And um, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. It's really hard. Not very many people can pull off. They sell, you know, a little bit and sell a lot. Later, when they're really big, they sell a site license, and it'll be on all the computers in one place. But we're talking about it, trying to get it, you know, everywhere. The other thing is that uh, we, when you're trying to make it work with 50, 60, 100 different AT, um, that's a lot of work. And most companies do not want to get involved in trying to work with all those AT. It's, it's, it can be complicated and difficult. Um, we've been doing this for a lot of years, and, and so we know how to do it, and the, it's a, a benefit to them, so it, it uh, really is a, a two-way street to try and do it. But it's, it, it is a tremendous amount of work. So if I'm the director of a school or a teacher, and I hear about the solution, and I want to have that for my, for my children, for my students, what do I do? How do I get it? Um, a good thing to do is to uh, just contact us. Uh, you can just go to morphic.org um, and uh, M-O-R-P-H-I-C.org. And uh, you can download it and try it. Um, you can get in contact with us. Uh, we can do a, a, a Zoom call and explain it and show it. Um, um, uh, one of the other reasons why it, no one does it is that the only way it can really be everywhere especially in rural and, and uh, tribal and, and um, even urban under-resourced schools, is if it's free, because you're talking about putting something on every computer everywhere, a lot of places they don't have resources. We're working with schools where there's 69 kids from kindergarten through high school, that's 12th grade, K to 12, and there's only 69 kids in all of the grades combined. Okay, so they don't have, you know, resource people and AT specialists and things like this. Um, so um, it's, it's free and so there's no good commercial except to sell user data. And this is entirely secure and private. So that's part of the, the deal is making sure that it, we uh, have something that uh, can be used everywhere safely. Okay, so I understand from the user perspective why I would use it. But then you said, okay, as a user, if I have specialized software like JAWS or any other where I have a payable license, that you can pull that down into your Morphic profile. Um, why do the AT vendors agree to this? How does it work? Well, that's a good point. <coughs> it's really nice that it helps people, but uh, what does it do for the schools? What does it do for the AT vendors? Um, uh, for schools, for the first part, for the IT department, because they're the ones who end up taking the brunt of having to get all the AT installed. Um, you now can have any AT on any computer and your school without you having to install it on any computer because it's all automatic. So it's actually less work than even having just a few AT. For the AT companies, it's the first time that, uh, that a lot of these companies can even reach some of these different communities. The school with 69 students, they're never going to reach those places. So if we can get this we can make it so that the AT that they're getting out is they can sell it to a customer and that customer now can use it anywhere. And they can sell it to customers who don't have a computer. Mm -hmm. Or they can sell it to the state who can give it to the customer who doesn't have a computer. And before that would not be a, custom, a student. And finally we're doing an evaluation tool where uh, somebody who works with kids would be able to have free copies of all the AT that they could try with the kids so that now instead of you know trying the two or three they have access to 
they would have access to the full range of assistive technologies to try with the students. And that's another vendor benefit, because a lot of vendors, the hardest part is getting people to even see uh, your, your software. So how much is it used right now? Uh, is it only in the US? Is it, is it worldwide? How, much, how many schools or institutions have already implemented Morphic? And what is your general experience with having it rolled out? Well, we've just started this last year. It's on 10,000 computers in 50 universities and schools and community colleges and uh, libraries. Um, uh, St. Louis Library uh, went from having no AT on any like, computer on any of its uh, uh, branches to now having Morphic on all the computers and all of its branches. And it's going into all of them in San Francisco and, and you know, lots of other places. Um, the goal is to have it on every computer every public or shared use computer, a computer like at school where different people use the same computer uh, in the world. Um, um, it was based off of European and uh, commission funding and United States funding and Canadian funding uh, over the years. Um, we are, have started the rollout in the United States, but one of the reasons that I'm here uh, is to try to form partnerships with other places um, in one respect, it's free, so it's easy to move out, but in another respect, it's free, so um, it, nobody wants to be a distributor and get 20% of zero. Uh, so, <laughs> the, um, uh, but uh, there's uh, lots and lots of, this particular place gathers people who are in it for the uh, people and their programs um, that are already in the uh, field working with the uh, people, and so that's probably what we're here for, is to, to connect and to um, help learn how this can best work in their communities and then to make it available to them. So what can the project, the Zero Project community do to help? Well, uh, two things. Well, one, um, the, uh, if you know somebody who's got a lot of money and wants to, uh, you know, fund the base operation, that's great. Um, but the, um, uh, mostly what we're looking for is, is people who are interested and who um, are uh, recognized that, that uh, and again, everybody does, the need for our young and old, all ages, to be able to access and use technology even if they have a disability and need assistive technologies. There are a lot of assistive technologies that are free, so if you have free technology and a free way to get it, then it's very affordable in, in all countries and places. Uh, we're also translating in all different countries, and so uh, we're looking for people in different countries who are interested in translating it into their language. Um, we can do an auto translation, but uh, unless we have somebody who speaks the native language, you know, uh, we need to do that. So these are all things that can help. Well, I think given the, the very good international presentation here, you will definitely find partners in many different languages, I'm sure. Uh, if I want to try it right away, can I actually do that? Yes. Um, well, you can do the, uh, the Morphic part uh, is uh, available. You just go to morphic.org and it's right there. Click download free. Uh, the AT on demand, the way that works is we typically put all the AT packages together and then we'll put it on the server at the school or at the library because you can't download stuff from the internet onto secure computers. Um, and so that has an additional step to it. But if you're interested in that, you're an organization, contact us and we can work with you to, to um, explore that for your location. Okay, wonderful. So you're looking for, well, funding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that we're looking for people just testing and using it and rolling it out. We're looking for partners in different languages. Anything else as call to action for the, for the Zero Project community? Yeah, it's uh, languages and cultures. Um, the, um, the, and understanding the, the, the technologies. And, and again, right now it works on Mac and PC, and so we're also looking at how to address the same kinds of problems in, in Android and other kinds of, of places where uh, they don't use uh, Macs and PCs. Um, so we're actually trying to solve the problem, not sell a product. Well, yeah, we're selling it for free, so <laughs> no, the, the goal is to, to, to solve the problem. Okay. Well then, Greg, wonderful. Thank you for this teaser, I would say, because Greg has a wonderful session tomorrow where he will go into more detail. He will have also another, um, another chance on really presenting how it works. I all invite you to come tomorrow. It's 
I don't have the time it's in just, mind, but it's, it's tomorrow. It's the session just before the closing ah, session. Ah, just before the closing. So Friday afternoon, come and listen to, uh, to Greg else. and ask all the difficult questions in the session. Thank you very much. A session called Free Web Resources or something like that. AG Software, I think, something like that. Uh, Anyways, it's before the closing session and you can ask all the difficult questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Get a good conversation going. Yeah. <laughs>